Project structure can make an enormous difference in developer experience. A well-organized project allows you and your team to build and maintain your project efficiently. But what does a well-organized project look like on Roblox? Hi, I'm Steven. Let's learn something new. Let's take a look at organizing a project. To keep things simple, let's focus on two primary things. One, where can scripts even go to begin with? There are nuances between server or client scripts, as well as the newer script contexts. And two, how can I use folders to organize code? While this may not seem very important at the start of a project, code organization becomes a key part of scalability and maintainability as your project grows. Without an organization plan, your projects might end up feeling cluttered. You might find it hard to find scripts in the hierarchy or struggle to figure out where scripts interact with each other. Before we get into organizing our code, let's cover some basics. Where do scripts even go? Can they go anywhere? And even if they can, should they? Generally, there are three different types of scripts. Server scripts, client scripts, and module scripts. Server scripts can run on the server, client scripts will run on the client, and module scripts can be imported and used on either. Before run context were added, scripts had very specific areas they could run. Scripts could only run in server script service and the workspace. Client scripts could only run in player scripts, replicated first, the backpack, or the player's character. These restrictions made it a bit difficult to organize code, but at least gave a specific location for said code. With the new era of run contexts, a standard script object can have its context set to server or client. If the run context is set to one of these two values, the location of the script no longer matters, mostly. Scripts will now run just about anywhere in the game hierarchy with some caveats. First of all, client scripts still have to be in a spot that exists on the client. For example, a client script in server storage would never replicate to the client and thus would never run. Also, client scripts will execute anywhere on the client. Before, if you put a local script in starter pack, for instance, then it would replicate to the client and run for that client only. With a client context script, the client script will run within starter pack and within the player and within every other player. In such cases, a standard local script might still be a better option due to how its execution behaves. All right, so where do we put these scripts then? Well, the direction that I want to look at today is to place all of our server code within server script service and then all of our client code within replicated storage. Our client context scripts can then run within replicated storage, so that's a nice place to put them. What's also nice about this is debugging. Traditionally, developers would place local scripts within starter player scripts. But if an error occurred during testing, the stack trace wasn't clickable after stopping studio because it linked to a spot within the player object, which no longer exists once studio is stopped. But if the code is in replicated storage, it's always in a stable and referenceable position. Simply dumping all of our scripts into service containers isn't really a great way to organize code. We need something a bit more on top of all of this. Let's take a look at two popular organization techniques and why one is arguably better. Specifically, we're looking at folders by type versus folders by feature. A common practice in many frameworks outside of game development is to organize code by type. For example, you might have a group of scripts that perform high-level management of your game, like a money manager, a points manager, map manager, etc. You would place all of these within the same folder, maybe a folder called managers. Then you would have another group of scripts that deal with spawning things in your game, for instance, such as a character spawner, gem spawner, vehicle spawner, and you might put these into their own folder too, called spawners, and so on. Organizing code by feature means that any code pertaining to the same feature will live within the same folder. For example, you might have a vehicle feature and thus a vehicle folder, 
And inside this folder, you would have scripts pertaining to this feature, such as a vehicle spawner script, a vehicle finder module script, and maybe even some assets pertaining to the feature, like a, a model. From my personal experience, the feature-based folder structure tends to scale much better than the type-based folder structure. Type-based structures might make sense on a smaller scale at first, but become fragmented as the code base grows. For instance, you might have that vehicle spawner within some folder somewhere, but then you have your vehicle manager in some other folder and your vehicle model somewhere else entirely. So things are just all over the place where they could have been packed together within the same folder structure, which would have made it much cleaner. In other words, it's nice to have related code to be visually close together in the hierarchy. Organizing your code will help you scale and maintain your Roblox experiences successfully. And remember that any such organization guidelines are just a helpful tool. Again, they're just a guideline and not something that has to be followed 100% of the time. There might be times where throwing a local script directly into a UI button is the best solution to your problem. Sure, that doesn't fit into the organization pattern we just talked about, but sometimes that's okay. Do what works best for your projects. Thanks for watching.